this is Ryan Cooley. I'm going to walk you through setting up SAML on Process Maker 4.2. You can see I'm here in the admin settings under the SSO tab, and I'm going to go ahead and enable the SAML option down here. Then it's going to give me a new tab here with several options for setting up SAML. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to use a service called SAMLtest.id to set this up. That is a service that allows you to ensure that your SAML implementation works properly. So that's what I'm going to use for this. Of course, your configuration uh, will vary depending on your identity provider. So to get started, uh, let's take a look at SAML test. So you can see here they provide us with uh, several things that we need, several uh, pieces of connection information that we need, including the entity ID and the SSO location, as well as the signing certificate. So you can see here on this page, um, there's a location where we need to enter the SSO identifier, the SSO endpoint, and the certificate. So let's go ahead and enter the identifier first. That's going to be right up here under Entity ID. And again, this is going to vary depending on your configuration. It may not always be called Entity ID. It may be called something different. Uh, but in general, uh, this is what it will look like. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that into the identifier section. There we go. Now we need the SSO endpoint. And that is going to be this redirect SSO location. Go ahead and copy and paste that. And then we need the public certificate, which is this really long string of text here, which we're going to copy. And we're going to paste it right in here. There we go. Now, the other thing we need to configure with SAML test is we need to uh, send them our metadata so they know that we'll be using their service. So that's what this uh, entity ID metadata is for. So we're going to go ahead and copy that to the clipboard, just that URL. I'm going to paste that URL in here. They're going to go ahead and fetch that metadata. You can see they have taken the metadata off of our server and put it there. Now we also have a couple of other options here. Uh, we have the variable map and the user matching. So the variable map, when I open that up to configure that, you'll see there are several um, options here where you can ma map rather uh, process maker properties to uh, SAML attributes. So that means the service or the identity provider, in this case SAML test, is going to be sending us certain uh, SAML attributes with different names. You can see uh, this is what they tend to look like. Uh, and then we're going to map them back to our process maker user properties, and that's what's going to go into our process maker user database. So you can see uh, down here is where uh, this particular identity provider tells you uh, which of these uh, names correspond with the friendly name of the attribute. Uh, so, uh, for example, we have the mail, which is the email address. That is it right there. And you can see we've pre-populated it because in a lot of cases, SAML services will use these same uh, attributes. So we've pre-populated this list for you. But uh, if your identity provider uses different attributes, you can feel free to change these and then save them in here. Uh, the final option I want to show you is this user matching field. What this allows you to do, uh, so say, uh, say you already have a process maker uh, system set up with several users in it, and you need to match those process maker users to uh, your identity provider. M in most cases, that's going to happen via email. So that means that the first time a user logs in via SAML with a particular email address, they will be, ma they will be matched to a process maker user with that same email address. Uh, also, if they don't exist already in the system, a user will be created. But if they do exist in the system already, they will be matched by email address. Uh, now, there are some cases where companies, uh, rather than using email, they might want to use uh, some other unique identifier for a user. Uh, so you can feel free to do that here. So you can see we're using the email property, but you can use um, username, uh, ID, uh, last name, any type of uh, user property that's available in Process Maker here and then you can map that to a SAML attribute. So again, we've gone, gone ahead and filled in the default options here for you. Uh, generally, this will be what works, uh, but again, feel free to change that if your configuration differs. So now that we have all of those options specified, I'm gonna go over here, I have another browser window open. 
and it's going to go ahead and provide me with that login with SAML option. I'm going to click on that. It's going to redirect me to SAMLtest.id. And you can see because this is a testing service, it provides me with the usernames and passwords right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the first one. And I'm just going to accept the terms here. And then you can see it is redirecting me uh, back to Process Maker. If I go back to our Process Maker admin page and take a look at the users, you'll see it has created a new user that matches uh, the details that uh, SAMLtest.id sent us. And that is how you configure SAML with Process Maker 4.2.